Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Pastor Don Weekly Podcast Show. Again, I want to thank you for joining us and listening today to my weekly devotional, or as possible, viewing it on YouTube, Facebook, or wherever else on the internet. Again, it's always a pleasure to be able to bring to you each and every week a, my thoughts on a particular Bible teaching. And of course, I want to <laughs> welcome my friend, my brother in Christ, my, uh, uh, whatever he's wearing Spider-Man, there. Spider-Man, uh, Black. There you go. Uh, the Black Spider-Man when he came back from the Secret Wars. For those well, that I'll can. tell you this. He's in that Halloween spirit. I want to wish everybody a very happy Halloween. I got to be honest with you, Jonathan. I'm not a Halloween guy. I mean, neither am I. I neither am I. I have nephews, so you, that's know, you, awesome. you got to do what you got to do for the kids. Sometimes. Well, and again, I actually dressed up yesterday for, um, we, uh, two Sunday, excuse Sunday. me, for a Hallelujah Hoedown. We had an event for all the kids. By the way, it was a very successful event. Of course. Awesome, a lot of, awesome amount of kids. Had a great time. And I, I actually dressed up as a cow, cow kind of like a cowboy. I looked kind ah, of a cowboy fan. Yeah. I don't like it. Oh, I love the, I like the cowboys, but, uh, I looked a little ridiculous, but you know what? We all had a great time. You look great. Right, right. And, uh. Yeah, the mask is tough because I knew we were doing this show. <laughs> I yeah. put the mask Yeah, on. I'm wearing my mask right yeah, now, but that's the, the, it's the mask that God gave me, so I don't have a choice. <laughs> but anyways, you doing good? I'm doing great. Alrighty. Let me get started on today's, my opening monologue. You know, last week I introduced a new series that actually had a very intriguing title. I called it Dealing With Our Ex. And the reason I called it that is because pretty much every person alive has had experience in dealing with an ex. Either being a spouse, an ex-spouse, an ex-boyfriend, an ex-girlfriend, an ex-boss, an ex-best friend. So most of us know the feeling of dealing with an ex, either good or bad. Now last week I talked about besetting sins. If you recall, these are sins from our past that seem to hang on to us even after we give our lives to Jesus Christ. Some of us may have struggled with sins such as alcohol, drugs, pornography, anger, gossip. But even now, as a believer in Jesus, those sins still seem to haunt us and tempt us back to that old life. And it is truly difficult at times in dealing with these ex-sins from our past. Paul understood this clearly, and he described his feelings towards it in Romans chapter 7. But few of you have been able, a few of you have been able to relate to this topic, and you've asked me this question. I love Jesus, but I can't seem to get rid of my sins. I feel like a failed Christian. What am I supposed to do? Well, folks, that's what I want to talk about this morning. But the first thing I want to do is when you are struggling with besetting sins, the first action you must take is this. You need to recognize your best besetting sins. Recognition is extremely important to reconciliation. Let me go back to Romans chapter 7. I read this last week. I want to read it again because it's very powerful. Romans 7, starting in verse 15. This is Paul describing what besetting sins are in his own life. Romans 7, starting in verse 15, says, I do not understand what I do. For what I want to do, I do not do. For what I hate to do, I do. And if I do what I do not want to do, I agree that the law is good. As it is, it is no longer I myself who do it, but the sin living in me. I know that nothing good lives in me. That is my sinful nature. For I have the desire to do what is good, but I can't carry it out. For what I do is not the good that I want to do. The evil that I do not want to do, this I keep on doing. Now, if I do what I do not want to do, it is no longer I who does it, but it is sin living in me that does it. You know, these verses are powerful. Everybody looks at Paul and they say, oh my gosh, what a man of God, an apostle of Jesus, a, a credible individual who wrote pretty much the entire, most of the New Testament. And yet even Paul struggled with what he would call besetting sins. Paul says here that he knows what he wants to do, but he struggles in doing it. But what he does not want to do, he has no problem in doing. Can you relate to that? I know I can. Yeah, I it's know. so easy to sin, but yet so hard to do what God right, wants us to do. do. Mm -hmm. But in order to fix any problem, Donovan, you can relate to this. 
in order to fix anything in our lives, the first thing we always need to do is recognize that we have a problem. We need to soften our hearts, confess to God in humility our besetting sins, and ask God for help. The, the power behind a besetting sin can be very overwhelming, and most people want to hide it from the world. There was an elder at a local church that struggled mightily with lust. No matter how hard he tried, he could not stop lusting over beautiful women. Now, this elder was a pillar in the community. He had a successful business, and he was well respected by the townspeople. He won a local election by a landslide, and most people looked up to him in admiration. No one ever suspected that he had this problem of lust. And he did his best to hide it to everyone, including his friends, his family, and of course his pastor. Well, unfortunately, the temptation of this sin became stronger and stronger to the point that on one Sunday morning, he openly made sexual advances in public to one of the female members of his church. Many people saw the incident and were absolutely shocked. So in this one moment of complete weakness, he lost it all. His, repu his reputation sank dramatically. He lost his political seat on the chamber board. He lost his seat as an elder. But it all starts with recognizing that you have this besetting sin in your, in your life. We need to realize that pretending that it doesn't exist does not mean that it is gone. The more we hide these besetting sins, the more it will control us. And these sins have major consequences and causes immeasurable damage, as we can see what happened with this elder. No one, and I repeat, no one is immune to besetting sins. It affects all of us. So after we recognize, we need to realize in our mind, in our heart, we have these besetting sins. Step two is to find ways to resolve this weakness. Step two is how do I resolve this weakness. In other words, we need to take positive action against our besetting sins. Once we realize that we no longer want to live with the ex-life sins that we have, we need to take the proper steps to get rid of them. There are two ways that I will discuss today on how to resolve besetting sins. Step number one, very important. Step one, repent to God. Once we recognize that we have a persistent sin in our lives, we need to repent and surrender that sin to God. Acts 3.19 says this, Repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. The times of refreshing may come from the Lord. Folks, these besetting sins are bigger and more powerful than our will to succumb them. We need to first repent and change our attitudes completely about our ability to defeat these weaknesses in the flesh, then surrender these things to God. So many times I've heard that. I've heard people say, I can do it. I know I can overcome a certain sin. But as time goes on, we go back to our ex, and we go back to those ex sins, and they come back and it haunts us again. Folks, none of us are strong enough in the flesh to be able to do it on our own. As Paul said, we are, all, are we on our own are powerless against the sins of the flesh. But folks, nothing is impossible with God. He can lead us in this fight against temptation to sin, but it all begins with our surrender. We need to make that first move and decide to allow God to take control of our weaknesses and submit those weaknesses to him. James 4, 7 says this, Submit yourselves to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Every day, folks, there is a spiritual battle that goes on inside of us. But it's our choice. We can choose to continue in this besetting sin or we can repent and completely surrender it to God. Step one, repent to God. Step two, take responsibility. Step two, Take responsibility. After we repent of our besetting sin, the next step is to take responsibility for our weakness. In this case, another word for responsibility is accountability. Romans 3.23 says, For we all have sinned and fallen short to the glory of God. 
In other words, no one is better or worse Christian than anyone else. People sometimes put pastors on this pedestal as if, if once we became a pastor, we no longer sin. Or that once we became this leader of a church, that no longer that we struggle with sin. Well, let me tell you folks, that is not true. We are no different than anybody else in this world. We all struggle with sin. We have all fallen short. The best way to keep uh, each other on track in this fight against besetting sins is to be accountable with someone that we trust. One of the greatest gifts from God is his body of believers in fellowship. As brothers and sisters in Christ, we need to be there for each other. Not to judge one another, but to lift each other up in Jesus Christ. The world may not understand us. They will not understand our faith. But everyone in the body of Christ does understand and can help us in our weakness. 1 Thessalonians 5.11 says this, We should encourage one another, build each other up, just in fact, as you are doing. Folks, we need to work together to support and pray for each other and live a life pleasing to God in unity and in harmony. But again, the choice is ours. After we recognize our weaknesses, then we repent and surrender these sins to God. We also sometimes choose to hide our besetting sins so that we don't let anyone get within the borders of our, of our flesh. But what we really need to do is we need to work with one another. We need to trust one another in working together to get rid of our weaknesses. What a blessing it is to live for God in unity with one another. So at this time, I want my audience and I want you, Donovan, to do something for me. I want today to be the day that we not only recognize our besetting sins, but also make the decision to repent and get rid of this X and not allow this sin to disrupt our relationship to God. So what I want you to do today, as you're listening or later on today, is I'm asking you to grab a small sheet of paper. And I want you to put as a headline on top of it, get rid of my X. Then I'm asking you to write down that one sin that you struggle with the most. What sin from your ex-life do you want to surrender to God today? And folks, let me tell you, this is not a community event. This is to be done independently and privately. Then when you're done, I want you to take this sheet of paper. I want you to fold it up. And then I want you to offer it to God. Folks, that is the most important step to this process. You are essentially saying that you are going to give this besetting sin to God and you are not taking it back. God is now in charge of that sin on that sheet and you're going to get rid of it forever. It's like you're telling God, Lord, this is yours. I am surrendering my besetting sin to you forever. Then the next step is you allow God to guide you and help you fight off the temptation of that sin going forward. It is trusting God with your biggest weakness. Do not show the piece of paper to anyone. This is between you and God. But then it is up to you if you want to find an accountability partner that can help you stay strong in the Lord and against this sin, you have the right to choose to do that. We are all still very weak in the flesh. So we all need just a little bit of human help in keeping us on track against temptation. I'm asking you to please do this. I've done this before. I've done this in a Bible study. I've done this in church. I've done this in other areas. And the feeling of just releasing a sin, even though all you're doing is writing a piece of paper, putting in your purse, wallet, somewhere that you, that's private to you, just that release does amazing things to your mind and it does amazing things to your heart. It's an awesome way to free yourself from the bondage of that persistent sin and allow God to give you the strength and wisdom to get rid of that X. Folks, today's the day. To time to give that sin up to God and allow Him to strengthen you and get rid of that weakness. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we know that although we are completely forgiven, 
We know that we are completely secure in our salvation based on com 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 completely giving our lives to Jesus Christ for our Lord as our Lord and Savior for the forgiveness of sins. But even through all that, Lord, we're still weak in the flesh. We still have our sinful nature. And we still struggle mightily with certain sins. But Lord, today is the day that I surrender my besetting sin to you. Lord, today is the day that I completely trust you in my weaknesses. Lord, lastly, today is the day that I let go and let God. We surrender our besetting sins to you today, Lord, never wanting to take it back. In the name, in the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Well, folks, I hope you enjoyed this podcast today. And I hope that you take the time to go ahead and write down your most difficult temptation and give it over completely to God. And again, please, I want to go ahead and, and remind you to take a look at Reflections Ministries Facebook page. And go ahead and look at all those daily devotionals, these weekly podcasts that we do, the inspirational videos, and so many other things on that page. I want you to really enjoy it, follow it, and then, of course, share it with all your family and friends. And, of course, you can download my app, Reflections Christian Church, on Apple or Google Play. And, again, enjoy these weekly podcasts every single week. You know, I, I'm always praying. Every time I do these things, I pray before, asking God that these podcasts will lift you up in Christ and that they're a blessing to you and your family. Folks, it's all about Jesus, Monday through Sunday, not just a Sunday morning. And I'm hoping that these, these times that we have together here allows you to get a taste of Jesus every day and get lifted up by him. And it is a great way also to use as a witnessing tool that you could share these podcasts and devotionals with so many of your contacts that let them be lifted up in Christ as well. Thanks so much for listening. God bless you. Okay. Um, awesome, awesome, awesome. Now, is that the conclusion of... Oh, no, no. This is the beginning. This is just the beginning. Yeah. Of the okay, that we, was... are, we are done with the portion of the besetting sins okay. portion. portion. Next week, we're going to take a look at how we get rid of our ex, which is the expectations from this world. So that's going to be next week, and it's going to be interesting because it sounds seems like when I talk to people, Donovan, most people live life frustrated. Yes. Most people live life angry, discouraged, yeah. depressed, frustrated. And I ask them why. Because they had all these dreams. They had all these ideas. They had all these expectations from the world. And what happens? It just it's doesn't materialize. And what happens is people get frustrated. So I've got a plan through the Word of God to show you how to get rid of that X and put that hope into something else. Okay, yeah, and there's a lot of X's out there. Trust there me. is a lot of X's, X's out there. So this is a lot of opportunity to look at that old life, put it aside, mm -hmm. and go forward with Christ. Absolutely. Um, I have a question for you in regards to, uh, you know, God should be Sunday to Sunday. Of course, we should know that. Sure. But let me ask you this, just as a regular person, somebody came up to me and asked me this, and they said, well, you know, I just go to go to church on Sundays and I really live the rest of my life. He goes, that's the minimum requirement. Is that good enough to serve God? Well, I'm not. See, that, there's the thing. And, I, and it's funny you said that because I've heard that too. Mm -hmm. I'm not 100% sure what it means by minimum requirement. Mm -hmm. I mean, the whole idea of what... Sometimes we need to ask the question. I'll ask you this question, Donovan. Yeah. What does God want from Don Vincent Eve? What does God want from you personally? Not the church corporately. Not the church that you go to. You individually, what does God want from you? Uh, in my in, in my studies, in my opinion, He wants a personal relationship with me. Absolutely. Does a personal relationship just mean one hour a week on Sunday mornings? Is that what you would consider a personal relationship? Think of it like this. If you only talk to your wife or husband, boyfriend or girlfriend, one hour a week for seven I days... I probably have you... a better life. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a, that's a different story. <laughs> but yeah. I'll counsel you on that yes. later. But if you only talk to your spouse or you know your loved ones mm -hmm. one time a week for, for one hour mm -hmm. a week, how would you be growing with them? How would you become more wow. intimately involved with them? How would you guys be getting closer mm -hmm. if that's the only amount of time that you put with your that particular loved one? Well, we need to put God first. And if we're only putting in our time mm -hmm. for Sunday morning and then just saying, okay, I check off my to-do list. I went to church and not think about it until the following Sunday. 
then how are you growing in your relationship with Jesus? Yeah, because what you said is exactly true. What God wants is us. He died for us. I mean, I've always laughed at this, Don. You may chuckle. <laughs> Why would God come down to he from heaven to this sin-infested earth to die a gruesome death for someone like me? Why would he want me in heaven? Why would he want someone like me, someone like you, someone like anybody in heaven when he's got everything at his disposal in heaven with all the angels? That's how much he loves us. And that's how much he wants a personal relationship with us. So your answer is exactly it. Is, it's exactly it. God wants a personal relationship. He wants that intimacy. And for that to happen, you need to be able to be with the Lord some Monday through Sunday. And unconditionally. Because exactly. Because giving us the choice to do that. Because he, I mean, he can technically make us do it. But oh, well, then we have free will. And that's right. a, a free. Right. No, people don't realize this. But do you realize that free will is a gift from God? Yes. It's a huge gift. People that says, no, no, I have a choice. I don't have to love God. I don't have to do this. And you're right. That's a gift. Yeah. Because God could easily do a dog that says, yeah, he can make us look like robots. And we, you know, do whatever God wants us to do. It's not that way. Well, I mean, if you, uh, and uh, it's, Old Testament, he has he describes what some angels duties are. You got angels that just worship him twenty four seven. That's all they do. You know, mm -hmm. you got guys that just do. You know, they don't have free will like that. Where well, they do, but they really don't. Well, yeah, because again, angels don't have you know soul. The, the angels are ministering spirits right. of the Lord type thing. But yeah, God could have created us with the idea of of being, basically being under His will per se and not having any choice you know there's, that's always the biggest argument if god is so sovereign then why do we have free will because people don't realize that free will is a gift yeah. it's a complete yeah. gift god is sovereign god is in control but he gives us this gift called free will because if he didn't give us free will think about it would, it, would adam and eve would the struggles with adam and eve ever happen no no adam and eve would have never succumbed to that right. that the, the serpent or the devil so god gives us that free will as a gift right because it's like the old saying donovan you can't love if you don't have the choice to hate. You, ah, love, yeah. love, is, love is a choice. Yeah, love is a choice. If God gives us the choice to love him or God gives us the choice to live separately from him, that's up to us. But uh, wasn't there a Bible verse, and I'm just kind of throwing this stuff out there to, to reinforce what, what we're saying here. Didn't the devil come up to uh, uh, God, you know, one Sunday they were meeting up there, and he comes into the church, and God looks at him and says, Hey, uh, Lucifer, uh, what's up? What are you doing up here? Oh, I was walking around the earth, and I see. Oh, you're this talking guy. about the Book of Job. The Book of Job. I see this guy, and the only reason he worships you is because you you have this hedge around him, mm. hedge and, of protection. And uh, if it wasn't for that, this guy would go and curse you, and he he just rebel against you, and whatever, whatever. You're, you're describing Job chapter one and verses uh, starting in verse six. How God and Job had a choice to either follow God and well, what did his wife do? His wife said, "Oh, you know, curse God and go go about exactly. your way." So she made the choice to 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 curse God and he, and advise Job to do the same. Mm -hmm. But Job chose to follow God. Job chose even through all he lost. I mean, think lost about what Job everything. lost. Everything he lost, everything, including his family. He lost literally everything, and Afflicted. he still, oh my yeah, gosh, illness, everything else, and yet he never cursed. And then he brings these three so-called buddies. And they're that basically blame Job for the condition that he's experiencing, mm -hmm. and he still didn't curse God. So again, that's a, it's a good example of how you know what in life we're all going to have hardships. Yes, we're all going to struggle financially, illnesses, relationships. The bottom line is, is life is hard, but God never leaves us or forsakes us. God will always lift us up. Well, what I liked about this story is, I'm not saying this is how it is, but a personal relationship. Obviously, Job had a personal relationship with God. Because, There's no question. Because he was rewarded seven times what he had lost. Yeah. At the end. At the end. At the end, he was. And that's and actually a great question because a lot of people ask me, what does it mean to have a relationship with God? And that's actually a great question. What question. define a relationship, relationship with God? Does that mean I'm on my knees 24-7 praying? Is that a relationship? No. Does that mean I'm, I'm in the Bible 24-7? Is that a relationship? No. The relationship with God is when your heart is when... I always describe it as when you can see God face to face. And you say, mm -hmm. well, I can never see God face to face. Yes, physically you can't. But emotionally, mm -hmm. mentally, your, your entire presence. presence. Just knowing that you're with God face to face. Even if you're not saying a word. Mm -hmm. Feeling his presence. Feeling his love. Listening to your heart as God speaks to you in that still small voice. That's the relationship that God wants. 
That's what he wants from us. He wants us to put him first. Not our jobs, not our families, not our finances. Him first and allow God to arrange all those things perfectly to bring you joy. That's what he wants. That's the in relationship that he's looking yeah. for. Well, one of my favorite movies, of course, is The, the Ten Commandments with uh, well, Charlton Heston and Edward G. Robinson. Mm -hmm. You had all kinds of stars in that movie. I mean, it, it was a C.C. D. DeMille uh, directed movie. Mm -hmm. And uh, it actually, it was a remake. Mm -hmm. It wasn't it was. the first one. It was a remake. So they, it was. They, they did one in the 20s exactly. before that. And I have that movie, by the way, so take one. But what I'm saying is, uh, whenever I read the story of Moses, when you're talking about that presence of being with God and stuff, here's a guy. Now think about this. You have got to be one bad dude to go as a slave in front of Pharaoh and tell him, we're not going to do this. Mm -hmm. We're not going to. Because he had that presence of God and that relationship with God. Through the burning bush? Right. That said, hey, you're going to go and do this. Well, send your brother Aaron. But he had all that protection. I mean, to be able to walk into a biker bar and know you're not going to get beat up. You know yeah. what I mean? And just to have that confidence because he had a relationship with God. And a lot of people look at me and say, well, I can't relate to that. I've never seen a burning bush that doesn't get consumed. No, that's like a fairy tale story. But in actuality, you, you can relate to it every single day. Mm -hmm. Instead of God asking you to go to Egypt and, um, and freeing the Israelites out of the, and freeing his people, mm -hmm. he may be asking you to go to your co-worker and tell him a little bit about Jesus through your own yes. testimony. So that co-worker is your Egypt. Mm -hmm. But God is speaking to your heart to go talk to them and tell them who I am. And you've got it. And it's still the same risk. Mm -hmm. It's still the same fear. It's still the same. But when God says, I will be with you while you're doing that, then you're doing exactly what Moses did. It's the same idea. It's taking the risk for the Lord and allowing God to lead you in what he's asking you to do. And that's what Moses did. And seeing the results of that, uh, just like when we uh, ask you to share the podcast, it's the same thing. Exactly. Share the message. You know, get out there. And when you have that personal relationship, it, uh, Moses wasn't concerned about, well, what if I go out there and it fails or you know I stutter, I can't talk really Oh, yeah, good. he made a lot of excuses. Yeah. Uh, he has real, God said, I got it. You just yeah. go do do what I'm telling you to do. I'll take care of the rest. Exactly. And, and again, and, and he's telling you and I the same thing. You may be reading these devotionals, reading, uh, listening to the podcast or watching it, and say, yeah, this is nice. And then you flip it off and go do something else. Mm -hmm. When you could be sharing it a lot and, and maybe promoting it, mm -hmm. because it's not about me or Donovan doing no. the show. It's all about God being glorified through these podcasts. It's allowing... We're just it. instruments. Exactly. Perfect. We are just instruments that God uses in order to, to basically to spread, to, his word. to spread his word to other people. So what you're doing when you're sharing it is you're basically doing a, a full witnessing of Jesus to other people. So and letting awesome. us or let Pastor Don do the speaking exactly. as the instrument. All you have to do is say, hey, I'm listening to this uh, podcast. Check and I think it will bless you. And, yes. and, and let God do the rest. Yeah, do God, the rest. God does the rest. Yeah. Absolutely. And so, you know, a personal relationship is, is, is very important. And, you know, like I said, some people say, well, you know, my person, I like that analogy. I never thought about the analogy that you just said, like, talk for once a week. That's sometimes it doesn't grow. So, yeah, nothing grows from that. Right. So by uh, doing that now, I, I'll i look at it a little bit different. Well, I'll tell you why I, I said that to Donovan, mm -hmm. because I was a once a week. <laughs> okay. Okay. When I owned my businesses and I was working almost 18, 19 hours a week, excuse me, a day, uh, 85, 90 hours mm -hmm. a week, I got to be honest with you, Donovan, um, God was probably the least thing on my mind. Right. I mean, I was. I, it was good. all about making money, and I was all about you know what. Could, what's the next deal that I could be making to increase my wealth? So I was that. But boy, I'll tell you this, folks. On Sunday mornings, I was there. I taught. Mm -hmm. I was. I. 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 When I was going through, um, I did the um, the uh, greetings when I was at certain churches. So I was well known there. Right. But I was a once a week person. I yeah. checked it off, and Monday through Saturday is back to doing I, my business. I've done the bare minimum. Yeah. Exactly. I was doing exactly the bare minimum. And today I look back and then says, I had no relationship with God. None. Wow, really? None. No. You're what I was is I was playing the game called Christianity. I was I was being looked at as a Christian. Oh, yeah. Wow, I see uh, Don over there. My gosh, he's a Christian man. He loves the Lord because they, I put on a front on Sunday mornings. Right. Hypocritical. Look, exactly. I was more hypocritical because I looked like I was spiritually strong and literally I was spiritually very, very weak. Until God realized, uh, God showed me, and I realized that I was really not really even living like a Christian. I was living basically for myself and my business. And then God basically, as, as most of you know, took it all away and realized, 
What he wanted from me was me. Right. He wanted me. Uh, let me interject there. How 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 long did you do that? How many years or how many oh, months? Gee, was how many years? Thirty. You know, before you realize, hey, wait a minute, I raised my kids. Blah blah blah. I mean, because like I so said, you, your kids are spiritually uh, grounded, which is amazing. So so uh, a lot of people that don't know, Don's whole family has basically transformed with him, which kind of shows me you have a relationship. Yeah, uh, well, yeah, I've been I've blessed. been blessed with great yes. kids. I mean, my, my well, daughter, Ashley, too, yeah. Uh, yeah. My, whole my wife is wonderful. My daughter, Ashley, is great. You know, she had a, a, a rough period, mm -hmm. but she's come back to the Lord on mm -hmm. fire. You know, my son, she, he helps me in the church. He's, mm -hmm. he's like my, he's like a, wingman, the big, he, not even, he's better than a wingman because he basically does more than I do. <laughs> so he's been grounded in the church. And that was all. And then that, I'm glad you brought that up because when people look at my kids, I said, man, you know, Don, Linda, you guys did a great job. Yeah. I didn't do it. That was God that did that. Because I'll tell you this, back, back in those days, Linda raised him because I was never home. Right. I was Linda's the one that did all the work in the house. So basically, he said, Don, golly, Don, you're a great father. Well, I wish I could say that. It was God that taught these kids. It was God that lifted them up. It was God, God did that, all the that, work. It was God that led you to have a woman that would uh, exactly. sit into that role while exactly. you were out there doing... Uh, that's, very, that's very, very true. So I'll, I'll tell you, when we recognize that God is first in our lives... That's when your life completely changes, mm, and it changes preach, for the better. Preach. For the better, because preach. now you're you're allowing God to put everything else, your business. Uh, let me ask you this, this. and I, you know, I, and it's always good to point out other people, but it's you know, it, pastors rarely use themselves, other than I was a pimp and I used to be a drug dealer. Those are the pastors that I'm used to. Mm -hmm. I'm very rare that I've run into a pastor that had millions of dollars, had a you know, business and things like that. I mean, remember last time we talked last week where you were saying like you would go on vacation and even on vacation, you're still trying to do the deal. Oh, you know, you, you know, this is your oh, family absolutely. time. Absolutely. Absolutely. You're still trying to do the deal. Still trying to do the deal. So, you know, now that, that, that you have that transformation and God being such a good friend with you with that relationship you have with him, he didn't give up on you. Very true. Um, That's very true. You know, now, you know, that, that you had God said, no, I'm not giving up on this guy. I'm going to bring him like that. Are you more happier now than you were when you had millions and billions of dollars? Yeah, yeah. The answer to that question is yeah. I thought I was happy back then. I really did. I mean, when you have the nice big house and you got you know the nice cars and all that stuff, but you're always working to. I mean, when do you have time to enjoy all that stuff? Exactly. See, the 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 point was is that my only my only enjoyment was to make more is to get more. So really, I didn't even understand what joy was. Right. You know, I was just living for the next dollar to, right. to, to, to go earn type thing. So yeah, I did I did I have a, a great life? Oh, I'm not complaining. Yeah. I had a wonderful life. Good but did I have a joyful life? No, right. I had no idea what a joyful life was. I was content only because I had, I could pay my bills and mm -hmm. I had money in the bank. Mm -hmm. But was I joy filled? Did I really, really enjoy what life and, and what I was doing? No, I really didn't. Right. Because I didn't, like you said, I didn't have the time to really enjoy it. I was too busy all the time trying to get you know more and more money. So today, do I enjoy life? Yes. Yeah. Do I have joy in what I do? Yeah. Do I have any money? No. no. But do I enjoy well, it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that's okay. See, that's, and it goes back to the free will. Mm -hmm. And you, and you're a great example of this, Donovan, because Donovan has the free will to go get another job. And he could live, he could be living in a mansion twice my size as if he wanted to. He could be doing that. He's chose to surrender his time to Jesus to do a show like this, to do it. all the videos you see, everything that's done for this show is done by this man here. He's made that decision to live contently and then give his time to the Lord. And you have joy? I have joy now. I mean, because yeah. when I was uh, in the military, don't get me wrong, you know, you're a soldier, you're doing what you're supposed to do. Um, but even though I was raised Catholic and I'm still a Catholic to this very day, you know, I, I was doing the bare minimum. I was just right. doing what, what, I, what I was taught to so do, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And to me, it was, it was just like, it was just a process of life that I had to do. Mm -hmm. But uh, am I over here overseas indulging in alcohol and women? And yeah, of course, I was doing all that stuff. But mm -hmm. in the five years that I've been uh, done with my commitment uh, to the military, and I reassess what was going on with myself. I've never been happier because uh, I was on a Don just before a party started. A friend of mine that we were in the military together, she recently got married mm -hmm. in Phoenix. And I got up and went to Phoenix and I came back in the very same day, you know. And, uh, That's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. So, but, you know, just to, to, just to have the See, golf. he's a young man. He can do that. <laughs> Old guys like me, that'd right. be a struggle. Yeah, but just to have the gall to get up and do that. I mean, because when I was in the world, mm -hmm. like you, I was still, I got this bill. I got to pay for this kid. I got to do this. I got to, I, got, I mean, I had no joy in what I was doing. And now I have no money, per se, 
and I'm I'm great. Yeah, I mean, I, I've been blessed. Mm-hmm. I've just been. I could do whatever I want to do. Yeah. Just, and yet, but see, but the, the nice thing is, is that you've made the choice with your free will to commit a lot of your time right. to God through this show. Right. See, and, 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 and you know, Donovan will never say he's the big church goer and, yeah. you know, and all this stuff. He's not teaching Bible studies yeah. or he's not, he's not teaching, you know, the word of the Lord. But you don't need to be doing that to have a relationship with God. What he's doing for this show, what he's doing behind the scenes that amount of time and effort in order for you to be able to get this show and then be able to share it, that is what we're talking about in regard to having that relationship with yes. the Lord. Yeah. And it's important. Yeah, and a lot of people don't. Uh, and I, we, we, we say this on the show all the time for those listeners that are listening on the podcast. Remember, we're doing a video as well, and the numbers are great. Uh, by the way, the numbers are really good. I'm going to tell you about that a little bit later. Praise, praise, but, um, that's all Lord. Yeah. Thank, thank um, God. Like I said, when I met this man, here's a guy, he's, you know, he's trying to, you know, build this church and he's doing these things. It kind of reminded me of Peter when Jesus mm-hmm. told him, go build my church. Yeah. And, uh, the rock. you know, you're telling me your ideas and how we started. And from what we started with, you know, I, I'm not the messenger. This is the messenger. But the Lord has given me talent enough to say, okay, Donovan, you got the talent. He's got the message. Combine those together, and here we are today. And you know what? For all of you listening or watching this podcast, God has gifted you with a talent, many talents. I'm sure yes. there is not one person that's listening or watching this that does not have talents given to them by God. The question is, is how are you using those talents to glorify Him? Right. Right. Donovan decided to use his talents in, in what he does to glorify God, and that's what he's doing. I'm using the talents of having a big mouth to talk about the Lord because that's what I love to do, yeah, right. and that's what I do. But you have talents, talents too, whatever yeah. it is, that you could be able to be utilized for God, and that's what this show does. It's just a gentle, very gentle reminder to allow God to lead you and then utilize what he has given you in order to expand the kingdom and give him more glory. More glory. And like I said, uh, all it takes for you is the hashtag Pastor Don or Reflections yeah. Ministry. And that's exactly uh, you know, it. Hashtag it on, 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 on your page, you know, your social page. Everybody has social media. I was just going to say that yes. you read my mind. The, the Lord working once again. Hashtag Pastor Don. Hashtag Reflections Ministries. Ministries. Hashtag daily devotional. Anything like that that brings this message back to those people. You're doing an amazing service for God. Three seconds of your time. And by hashtagging that, that thing goes internet worldwide. That might affect statistically how many people? Absolutely. Maybe just one. Exactly. It doesn't it doesn't mean, mean need to be thousand. It could just be one. But that one person found the light of Jesus and now they're serving him. That's what it's all about. So, uh, you know, I'm going to uh, do some research on Romans 7.15. A lot of exits are going on. Uh, I think that that's going to be a very, very long thing because there's a lot of exes out there. You know, ex-girlfriends, ex-jobs, ex-vices, mm-hmm. ex all kinds of stuff that we're going to go And we through. all can relate to it. That's what's so beautiful about it. All of us can relate to these exes. Right. Um, on the local front, um, in the news, and you, you brought that to my attention, the... Um, newspaper article? The, yeah, the, the, the newspaper article. I don't know if you want to highlight that or just tell mm-hmm. us a little bit about some of the things. For those of you guys that follow the Press Enterprise. Well, on, yeah, ex- ex- exactly. Twitter Thank you Facebook. for letting me. Mm-hmm. We've got a couple minutes mm-hmm. here. Uh, in the Sunday paper on the local section, there's a... Um, uh, in, the front, in the front page section of local, local. it says... There's a headline that says, Plans for Apartments May Reopen Golf Course. And basically what that is, it's an article in regards to where our church plant will... What we talking about. What exactly. Talking about. Mm-hmm. And basically what it is, is it's explaining the project. You know, the, you know, the beautiful 27-hole golf course, and then these 415 luxurious uh, townhomes or apartments mm-hmm. that's going to be built, and the timing of it. So it gives you a little bit of an uh, understanding of what the timeline and what is, what is happening there. Um, so it's a great article. So if you don't get a newspaper, that's fine. You can go on pressenterprise.com. Yeah. You can read it. Yeah, Facebook it, and Twitter. It's exactly. Facebook. So Sunday morning goes Sunday morning, uh, the newspaper. But my point is, is what I, I need the awareness of all my audience in recognizing what the, the time frame is. Because the one thing that I'm going to need your help is that when it does go in front of planning commission and when it does go in front of city council, I would need to flood those areas on those evenings with people supporting the project. Support yeah. And I'm not asking you to support the project just because I say so. I firmly believe even if the church was not going to be planted in it's that area, it is still a plus for the community in regards to having a gorgeous, top of the line, Peter Dye, Jack Nicholas <laughs> golf course. We're not talking about yeah. 
with all due respect, a, a, a small nine hole course. Right. Not knocking the course here in Edgemont. Been here for 40 years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But we're talking about literally a championship golf course, yeah. beautiful views, gorgeous townhomes slash apartments in the area. It's going to absolutely well, build up the, um, uh, the property values oh, of the absolutely. area. Um, and everybody like, wins. Yeah. And like I said, I went to a wedding this weekend in Gilbert, Arizona. And uh, we could have had that wedding right here. Yeah. You know, if we had a, an event like, uh, if we had an, a, a place like that, but we don't have that right now, which is what this is going to bring. And this place will be more than just a golf course. Uh, yeah. Don and I were laughing because golf is way down. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. People are not playing golf. Yeah. People, it's just that the industry is very, yeah. very low. But the, the whole idea is the money's not really made in the golf course. The money is made in events. The money is made for the uh, the restaurant and bars. Mm -hmm. The money is made in so it's many activities so, so, because you're going to be so proud of this golf course and this area that you're going to want to invite all your family, your friends, and everybody to be able to just enjoy the ambiance of what it's all about. But it's even more than that. you got a boys and girls club that this city has been dying, dying. for. I mean, we I know Maryville had a very small boys and girls club. We're talking a very... Could a be the real largest boys club. Exactly. Real boys the, could be club. the largest in the western in the western states. Mm -hmm. That's how big they want this boys and girls club to be. Teaching them how to play golf, mm -hmm. teaching them other skills, golf related. It's an and then a church. I mean, you could be worshiping God, then having lunch, enjoying the boys. Mm -hmm. It has got so much positive. A community there. gathering area. How would anybody not be for it? So mm -hmm. what I need your help is when we know what the time frame is for the planning commission decision and the city council. I will be asking you as a favor to Donovan and I, and basically for that that area of the community, to come out and voice your positive um, uh, opinion on what this project does. Because I don't see any negatives. I think it's going to be a blessing. Because a lot of people say, well, don't, we don't need more townhouses. Well, what do you think they're going to do with that area if they didn't put a golf course? Right. They're going to put house. They're going to put something in there because right. there's land that's right. going to be used. They could be just putting right. 5,000 more homes yeah, you know, in there. And, and then I know people don't, we don't need any more townhouses, but when you have a bunch of warehouses as, as we do. That's yes, another you thing. Do. Yes, you do. And um, if, if you can't make it to the uh, city council in itself, go to the city website. You can email your comments. The, mm -hmm. the comments there. Uh, Rick Sanzemeyer, he's the developing guy. That's mm -hmm. somebody you can contact, and you can contact the councilman in that area as well or the mayor himself yeah exactly to uh do that so. in this article uh, dave marquez which is one of the city council members he talks about his excitement yes. over this uh, project so yeah there's there's so, a lot of there's know, a lot of uh, good good right. things going on five minutes of your time hit the button there's exactly. your thing and that becomes public record exactly we've only got a couple minutes left so i want to just i, I kind of want to close and uh, just make a couple comments number one if you haven't had a chance to listen to the entire program I'm really encouraging you to go ahead and write down that one sin, that one weakness that you're struggling with. Please don't share it with your family, your friends. Right. Make it between you and God. But then when you when you do write it and you do give it to God, don't take it back. That's one of the things that mm -hmm. a lot of people struggle with. It, it, it lasts maybe a day, maybe two days, but then the temptation comes and then you go back to your flesh. Just try to allow God to, to help yeah. you with those besetting sins. Trust me, I've had many besetting sins and God has helped me through those. So it does work. And number two, I just want to uh, advise you, I want you all to have a wonderful Halloween. Halloween's not my favorite uh, uh, um, uh, time of celebration, but it's great for children. I love the kids. They dress up and all that, but please be safe. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a nutty time. There's a lot of very, very strange people out there. Just make sure that your kids are safe and that they have a great time. Grab a lot of candy, but make sure it's extremely safe. Let safe me close candy. out in prayer. Yes, absolutely. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much for this time that you give us. Lord, thank you for this venue that allows us to be able to just take a little bit of time to just praise you, to worship and honor you, Lord. Lift you up and share you, Lord, with, uh, with an audience, Lord, that is just yearning for your word. And Lord, I thank you for Donovan. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for him taking his time, Lord, to produce, to edit, to share all the things he does for this program, Lord. What a blessing it is that you brought him to me and to this show. And Lord, I want to pray for the audience, Lord. That as they are lifted up by this show, or they're enjoying these podcasts, Lord, that you would motivate them to want to share it with family, friends, and all their contacts. Lord, so that this, the word, your word will be spread all over this world, Lord, and you will be completely glorified. Lord, we honor you and praise you and give you glory in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, that's the podcast for this week. Please join us again next week. Pastor Don Weekly Podcast. You guys be blessed. Have a great and safe Halloween and a safe week. We'll see God, you next week. God bless you all.